All right, this is John, the bike guy, coming to you again. Today we're going to be talking about uh, derailleur compatibility with shifters, most specifically Shimano ones. And we are going to talk about cable pull ratios because that's the key to understanding if your shifter is going to be compatible with your derailleur. All right, let's get started with the cable pull ratios and derailleurs. And the first step to understanding cable pull ratios is understanding that the derailleur is effectively a lever. So it's a really complicated lever, but when I when cable gets pulled in, it's going to move the derailleur. When cable lets out, it's going to move the derailleur back. Um, it's just like a, a lever. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a really simple lever that you all are familiar with, just a simple teeter-totter. Okay, and I'm going to put the fulcrum right in the middle, right here. All right, let's say I push down on this with one foot. What side, do you, which, how much do you think the other side is going to go up? It's going to go up a foot too. So that's a one to one ratio, okay? So let's make this a little more complicated. Let's move the fulcrum to another spot. Let's say I push down on this with one foot. It's going to move something else other than a foot on the other side. Okay, what we call this relationship between input and output is, is basically a ratio. Uh, how much the shifter is getting pulled in, the shifter is pulling on the cable, and how much movement there is. So it's, it's kind of like a function. So let's say, like SRAM is called, they call theirs one to one. So every millimeter of cable movement responds to a millimeter of side to side movement from the derailleur. That is called a cable pull ratio. All right, you might be asking yourself, why is this important? Why, why do I draw triangles and teeter-totters? Is, is to help you understand that every single derailleur has its fulcrum set for you, okay? You cannot change where the fulcrum is on any derailleur. And that's what sets the cable pull ratio. All right, let's bring our, our lever idea into shifter, derailleur, cog, situation here. So we have the shifter acting upon our lever, okay? We, this whole thing is the derailleur, this whole part, and these are the cogs over here. So the shifter is going to pull, it's going to move a predictable amount given how much shifter cable has been pulled in or out, and it's going to point to each one of these things here. Um, these two things are made to work together, but the derailleur itself sets how much movement it gets depending on how much cable gets pulled. Okay, here I have two totally different derailleurs. They're totally different speeds. This one happens to be a nine speed SLX derailleur. And this one happens to be a seven slash eight speed Altus, okay? And the funny thing is, both of these have had their fulcrum set. They both have the same cable pull ratio. So let's say I moved the cable, pulled the cable in one millimeter. It's going to be exactly the same movement side to side if, as if I pulled this one in one millimeter. We're going to see the same travel left and right as we would with both of these because they have the same cable pull ratio. You might be confused now. You might be asking me, well, well John, I don't understand how this is a seven speed and this is a nine speed. Um, and they travel different amounts, you know, between each cog per click. And that's where the shifter comes in. The shifter is the brain of the operation. It pulls cable in, it pulls cable out. The difference is on different speeds of shifters, it pulls more or less cable in. The derailleur is always gonna move the same amount per millimeter of cable pulled in or out. The shifter will move it in or out more or less depending on how much cable it's set to let in or out. Okay, well it's not important to know exactly what the cable pull ratio of any derailleur is set to. It's just important to identify the groups which are the same. Um, so let's talk about type number one. This is the most, absolutely most common. It, Shimano took a very long time to change your cable pull ratios. So we're going to talk about type one here. Seven, eight, and nine speed mountain are all the same cable pull ratio. And as well as seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, road rear derailleurs are all have the same cable pull ratio. Their fulcrums are set in the same same spot. If I pull one millimeter of cable in, it's going to move 
for all these derailleurs is going to move the same amount left or right. Okay, that's type one. Let's talk about type two, Shimano 10 speed rear derailleurs. That's also called Dynasys. Um, this has its own totally different cable pull ratio that can only be used with Dynasys shifters. Uh, type three, 11 speed Shimano road rear. It can only be used with 11 speed road shifters. Uh, and here's the last of the rears, mostly. Um, 11 speed mountain rear is totally different than all the other ones. So if you want to use this shifter and derailleur, you have to match them up. So they have to be 11 speed shifter matched up with an 11 speed rear. Also called Dynasys version two. All right, so here's front derailleurs. Remember front derailleurs fit into all this too, even though I've shown you only rear so far. They, they operate the exact same way. The cable moves in, the derailleur moves in or out depending on its cable pull ratio. And this is the nice thing about this. Shimano has kept this the same pretty much for almost everything except one exception. So basically any, any front derailleur that Shimano has made is the same. It, it moves the same amount given the amount of cable pulled in. Um, the only variation is this unicorn uh, is a Shimano Dura's 10 speed front. Um, it has to be used with the Dura's shifter and it has to be used with the Dura's 10 speed uh, front derailleur, or two by 10, I should say. And the number seven is the non-index shifter. And these are compatible with any single shifter or derailleur you can ever think of because you are in control of where, how much cable gets pulled in or out. Um, it just depends on if you have a thumb or not to move it. So if you have this, while it's not indexed, it's not nice, you can't click it and you know it moves to the next gear, it will work with anything from Shimano, SRAM, Campy, any shifter and derailleur combination you can possibly think of will always work with the friction shifter. All right, let's get into speed compatibility. You have to forgive some of my chicken scratching. I crossed out some things I didn't like that I wrote earlier. Um, speed compatibility. While some derailleurs and shifters share the same cable pull ratio, uh, the shifter will ultimately dictate the number of speeds that you can use, okay? Your cassette or crank set must have the same number of cogs as the number of speeds the shifter has, okay? Uh, this all gets into the you can use a shifter and derailleur of different speeds, but you have to follow these rules here. So let's get on to the next one. For example, a 10 speed road shifter will work with a nine speed mountain rear derailleur only if a 10 speed cassette is used. All right, and why would you want to do this? Because, um, for example, I like 10 speed cassettes. I have a big range and I have a bike that I want to go up and down hills on but I don't want it to be a mountain bike and I want it to have curled bars. So I, I got a 10 speed road shifter and I paired it with a nine speed rear derailleur. You know why I paired it with a nine speed? Because a 10 speed mountain derailleur has a different cable pull ratio as the road shifters in 10 speed. All right. And I like that big range. So I paired it with a 10 speed mountain cassette with a nine speed mountain rear derailleur and I used a 10 speed road shifter. So that's, that's one reason you might want to do this. Uh, another reason you might want to do this is because let's say you have a nine speed road rear derailleur and you want to upgrade to 10 speed. Well, all you really have to do is buy a 10 speed shifter and now it works because they 10 speed road and 10, nine speed road both have the same cable pull ratio. All right. You can never use a different speed shifter with a cassette with a different number of speeds except in the case of seven and eight because the distance between each cogs uh, the cogs in both of these cassettes is exactly the same. Um, let's say you pair a seven speed shifter with an eight speed cassette, you have to choose which one of the cogs, big or small, that you don't use. If you use an eight speed shifter on a seven speed cassette, one of the clicks won't be used because you only have seven. All right, and the last thing, friction shifters, like I said before, can be used with any speed derailleur or cassette. You are ultimately the person who decides how far the derailleur will travel. All right, you might have noticed that I've only covered Shimano stuff in this, in this presentation. Um, I'm not gonna cover any of the different manufacturers, um, but here's some rules. You cannot mix shifters and derailleurs of different manufacturers in a few, except in a few cases. Um, friction shifters will work with any derailleur. 
Special SRAM shifters were made to work with Shimano derailleurs. If you have one of those, you might know. Um, SRAM non-index index fronts have multiple clicks in them, but they're not really, they don't, they're not indexed. So they're called, I call them kind of semi-friction. And also campy front shifters are non-index non as well. So you can effectively use them with any drill you want because the clicks are not indexed. They're just kind of, you know, they just pull cable randomly. They're almost friction. And this concludes the end of my presentation. Uh, hopefully it all made sense to you. If it didn't, um, I can probably elaborate in the comments section. But for now, this is John the Bike Guy. Happy biking and good luck. Thank you.